الحمد لله الحمد لله العزيز في ذاته العظيم في كبريائه مالك الملك ومالك الملوك بيده مقاليد الامور احمده سبحانه واشكره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله نبي الرحمه ونور الدجى ورحمه المهداه والنعمه المستاه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى ال بيته الاطهار واصحاب واصحابه الاخيار والتابعين الابرار ومن تبعهم باحسان صلاة وسلاما دائمين ما تعاقب الليل والنهار أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فاتقوا الله عباد الله اتقوا الله حق التقوى واستحيوا منه حق الحياة فاحفظوا الرأس وما حوى والبطن وما وعى واذكروا الموت والبلاء تدخل جنة المأوى أما بعد فالدنيا عباد الله الدنيا أحوال منقلبة أحوال متقلبة لا تستقر على حال يتقلب في الإحسان بين الحياة والموت والصحة والمرض والرخاء والشدة وغنى وفقر ويسر وعسر قال الله تبارك وتعالى في أول سورة العنكبوت أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم حسب الناس أن يدركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فليعلم أن الله الذين صدقوا وليعلم أن الكاذبين وقال الإمام ابن جوزي ابن جوزي رحمه الله فأما من يريد أن تدوم له السلامة والعافية من غير بلاء فما عرف التكليف ولا فهم التسليم وروى الإمام أحمد عن جابر رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تتمنوا الموت فإن هول المطلع شديد وإن السعادة أن يطول عمر العبد ويرزق الله الإنابة صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord and the cherisher the sustainer and the provider the nourisher the most compassionate the most merciful we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his mercy his blessings and his forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance for us, for our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our companions. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah Almighty alone. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, upon his family and companions. And those who follow in their footsteps, May we be among them, Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Brothers and sisters, we all know that we live in unprecedented times. We face, as human beings, we face many challenges. And as Muslims, we have our own particular unique set of challenges based on our faith depending on where we live and <coughs> as Muslims, as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and followers of Prophet Muhammad First of all, we do not despair. We do not succumb to these challenges and give up. And secondly, we have the solutions provided to us in our beautiful religion of Islam, in our teachings in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet But there are realities, brothers and sisters, that we need to face up. There are realities that our families, our sisters, our children face on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of us may not experience it, except now and then. There are situations and circumstances where some of the believers feel that they are in a desperate situation. They feel under tremendous stress and anxiety. Some go into depression. Some of the believers think about taking their own lives. And that is usually preceded by some type of psychological and emotional, even spiritual problems that we as a community have to understand and sympathize with and be able to relate to. We have to be compassionate with those who are suffering acutely from these challenges, face these obstacles in life. Our scholars have also looked at the circumstances and the reper repercussions in a different light. How to treat this problem? What to consider the person, how to consider the person in this situation? That their mind has now become unstable. And we know what the books of Fiqh say about someone who is not fully sane, in their full state of sanity. And the pen is lifted for them. So that what they may do after experiencing this kind of anguish and turmoil in their hearts and their minds, we need to look at in a different light than what was classically described by our scholars in the old days. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in a hadith in Musnad al Imam Ahmad, he says, La tatamanna wal maut. Do not desire death. Fa inna hawl al maqla'i shadeed. Prophet was talking about now the year after. What happens upon death? What awaits after death is severe. It's intense. It's much more difficult than what we have in this world, even if you are living a good life. And then he said, وَإِنَّ مِنَ السَّعَادَ And it is felicity and happiness and success that one would experience a long life. A servant of Allah and yet أُولَى عُمْرُ الْعَبْدِ The life of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extended. وَيَرْزُقَهُ اللَّهُ الْإِنَابَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them forgiveness. This return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, no matter what the circumstances are, the circumstances are, brothers and sisters, the harm that we see befalling us, the pain and the agony, Prophet sallallahu in this hadith told us, that we should look towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards a longer life in which we can turn around the situation with Allah's help. That we can ask for comfort from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our faith and trust in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that no matter what the situation may be, 
It could be much worse after death. Probably is. Nobody has come back after dying to tell us. But we have the Prophet ﷺ informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about what to expect. And so I was going to say that by taking one's life, you could be, in the Arabic they say, Kal Mustajiri min ar ibn Nar. Someone who is fleeing from the heat goes into the hellfire. And in English they say, from the frying pan to the fire. Yes, there may be some situations where it is allowed for us to seek death. That is, when there is tremendous fitna and tribulation at the end of time, when the Antichrist, the Messiah the Dajjal appears, when it is better in the Sunnah of the Prophet as he explained, to be absent from this world to be, or to be in it, than to be in it. Or when a believer is in battle and they smell the scent of Shahada, of martyrdom, those are unique situations that we will most likely not face in our lives. But those who are so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when they make certain du'as from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu you may think that they are seeking death but all they are doing, they are asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's company. They are asking to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countenance. And the Prophet sallallahu himself would make this type of du'a. And again, we should make this du'a, but it is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us death in a way that is befitting of a believer, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us an end to this life with the words of the shahada on our lips and the dua that is made by the Prophet one of them is أَسْأَلُكَ لَذَّةَ النَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ I ask you Allah for the sweetness of looking at your countenance وَشَوْقًا إِلَىٰ لِقَائِكَ and a yearning to meet you فِي غَيْرِ مَرَّاءِ الْمُبِرَّةِ وَلَا فِتْنَةٍ مُبِلَّةِ and the condition is to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when at the end of your life or throughout your life you do not experience any hardships any tribulations that are unbearable and that would lead us astray so we have the situation brothers and sisters where under normal circumstances, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a life that is long and full of virtue. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to meet him like the one who is absent from their family for a long time, desirous of meeting again, not the one who has disobeyed his master or her master and comes back and the master is angry with them. Scholars tell us there are two reasons why it is forbidden to take one's life. The first one, as we saw from Hadith Jabir, is that what awaits after death is not an easy and comfortable situation, even for the strong believers. The removal of the soul, the, the sight of the angels, being descended into the grave, being dropped into the grave, what, 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 what one might see in terms of Jannah, paradise or hellfire presented to the person in the grave. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith in al-Bukhari that when the corpse, the janazah, is put into the grave, and if it is a righteous soul, they will say, Qaddimuni, Qaddimuni. 
Present me now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Present me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the angels. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ And if the soul is not righteous, Prophet said, it will say, يَا وَيْلَهَا أَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ بِهَا Where are you taking my soul? And it will cry out of fear and pain that will not be heard by any human being. This hadith in Al-Bukhari. But it will be, and if it had been heard by any human being, the human being would collapse out of fear. Ibrahim al-Nakha'i, rahimahullah, when death came to him, he said, I see the angel of death, and I don't know if it will give me great tidings of Jannah or news of hellfire. These were scholars of Islam, these were the righteous folk. Al Hassan al Basri described himself on his deathbed as Nufaysa Ba'ifa, a small, weak soul. And in front of it is a grave situation that awaits. And he said, وَإِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ To Allah we belong. And unto him is the return. Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, <coughs> rahimahullah, he said that if a believer He said, whoever thinks that in this life peace and comfort and well-being will last forever, that person that person has not understood responsibility that is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala fahim at taslim and does not understand what it is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah al ankabut chapter 29 at the beginning, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Hasib al-Nas wa yutrabu wa yakulu wa manna wa huna yuftanun. Do people think that they will not be tried? That they will simply be left alone by just simply saying, Amanna, we believe. And that they will not be tested wa huna yuftanun. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nature of His creation. The nature of His creation. That He has put trial and tribulation. Fitnatil mahya wal mamat. In our lives and after death. This ayah, brothers and sisters, was revealed in the early days in Mecca when the believers, few as they were, were persecuted. Were oppressed in all ways, different ways, and they suffered tremendously the anguish and the persecution of the non believers. No matter what economic status they had in the society in Mecca, even those who were well off, they were jeered, taunted by their families. Others who were businessmen were economically boycotted. The poor, the slaves, were physically persecuted and harmed. The Prophet himself suffered at the hands of his enemies. And when Khabbab ibn al-Arad came to him, one day the Prophet was sitting in the shade of the Kaaba, and he asked the Prophet to make dua that the suffering be lifted. Prophet ﷺ became angry and frustrated at Khabbab. And he mentioned that there were people before who were persecuted in many different ways and he gave examples. And then he gave clear tidings at the end of this hadith. He said this deen will prevail. This deen will become dominant. It will come, it, the truth will be proved at the end. And that is the attitude that we should have. That no matter what the situation and the circumstances, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for us a way out of our problems. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will come to our aid as believers. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and compassionate. That He is a provider of comfort and relief for those who turn to Him sincerely. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ease and comfort and to be able to withstand the pain and the suffering, the challenges and the obstacles. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy of all the way that was stuck with the law and the same as me was stuck with the الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين ونستهدي ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الله سبحانه وتعالى continues in the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَ أَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَ أَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ For indeed we tested those who came before and Allah most certainly tests those who are truthful and honest and those who are dishonest and so we need to be honest in our relationship with Allah سبحانه وتعالى we need to have trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Him. The other reason the scholars have mentioned why someone, a believer, should not desire death. And that is also mentioned in the hadith of Jabir. The Prophet told us that if you have a life that is extended, you have opportunities have an opportunity to turn things around. You have an opportunity to have your sins forgiven. You have an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do many good deeds before the end of your life. To raise your level in Jannah. The Prophet said, لا يتمنين أحدكم الموت In Al-Bukhari, do not let not one of you seek death. If the person is doing good, then let them increase in doing good. And if it's someone who is not doing so well in terms of their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have a time to turn it around, to seek forgiveness. In another hadith, the Prophet said, لا يزيل المؤمن عمره إلا خيرا That a believer, if they have a long life, can only result in good. That they can attain those darajat, those high levels of Jannah, as they proceed in life. And so brothers and sisters, we should be ready to face the challenges of life as we do this. We should not give up hope. We should not despair. We should look towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and importantly as well to look towards those that can help us in the community. Whether they be in the medical field or spiritual help from our scholars and our leaders and our imams and other means that will bring us, inshallah, comfort and ease in our hearts and our minds. And life is a challenge of ups and downs. Life, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, is a series of trials and tribulations. And a true believer will go through life navigating all those challenges with either patience and perseverance, forbearance, and also with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given, them, having given them what He has given and giving them life and an extension of life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy and His compassion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to grant to give blessing to us, our parents, those who have passed, those who remain with us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his comfort and healing for those who are suffering from all types of sicknesses and diseases of the body and mind and soul. <coughs>